I edited a video in Filmora 14 for the first time and I found some things that I really like and some things I really don't like. I've been using CapCut quite a bit lately, so a lot of my observations are based on what I'm used to in CapCut and what's different in Filmora. Let me show you what I found. This is Filmora 14 with my video in here and edited. You have the preview area, media assets and whatnot. Down below is the timeline. One of the first things I really liked about Filmora is shapes. This video is about Canva, and in this particular spot, I'm talking about this toolbar up here at the top. So to make this pop out so you knew exactly what I was talking about, didn't have to hunt around the screen, I put this rectangle around it to give it emphasis. To do that, I just put the playhead where I want the rectangle to start. Then I come over here and click on this shapes button right above the timeline. You can choose from rectangle, arrow, ellipse, triangle, or line. I of course chose rectangle for this. Then your mouse turns to the crosshairs when you're over on the preview canvas. You just click and drag out your rectangle. If for whatever reason I was trying to emphasize my ugly head there, I wouldn't want it blocked. So come over to the right, turn off fill, and then come down to border, change the color to whatever you want it to be. We'll increase the thickness on that. You can also change the opacity if you don't want it to be solid. Blur it, we'll take that back. And if you hover over this little yellow square until you get the hand, click and drag that square and change the corner rounding. These are actual shapes that you can change. So this isn't just a image like a PNG or something. So if I wanna make it longer or narrower or wider, I can do any of that and it doesn't mess up the proportion. I'll click off of it here so you can see it without its little bounding box. And now I can emphasize what I'm talking about in the video without having to go find an image of a rectangle that's just the right proportions. If you make tutorial or how-to videos like I do where you're showing your screen and you want to emphasize and point out exactly what you're talking about or where you're going to do something, being able to have these kinds of emphasis shapes is really important. I know it's simple, but just being able to add simple shapes and adjust their proportions is a huge time saver. Another time saver is being able to color code clips. In a lot of my videos like this one, I start off with me on screen, I tell you what we're gonna talk about, then I go into showing you, and from time to time I pop back on screen to explain something or say something. There's the clips where it's me, and then there's the clips where it's the screen where I'm showing you what we're doing. In this case, it's a little weird because the screen clips that I'm showing you in this particular video happen to have me in them as well. But if I need to make adjustments to the color or lighting of how the clips of me appeared on screen, I wouldn't necessarily want to apply those changes to all clips. For instance, in these clips where it's just me talking to you, if I needed to change the white balance or make it warmer or make it more yellow, if I apply that to everything on my timeline, then in these spots where I'm showing the screen, my white text here would end up being tinge yellow or something, and I don't want to do that. You can see in my timeline here that for this video, I made all the clips of me, this blue color, and all the screen clips, this green color. And there's a few spots looking through the timeline where I pop in and say something and then switch back to the screen. So it's me sprinkled throughout all these different screen clips. Color coding them not only makes them stand out to me while editing, but I can also find one of these clips of me, right click on it, and click on this select all clips with the same color mark. So now all the clips of me are selected if I want to apply the style or color or crop in one shot. To change the color coding of any clip, just right click on it and then down at the bottom, pick whatever color you want it to be. This can also be really handy for keeping things organized in any way that makes sense to you. Another thing I really like is over in the properties under audio, you have a lot of the one-click things that we've come to expect like auto normalization and an AI voice enhancer, but you also have some fine tuning ability, not just to take it or leave it. For instance, in the denoising, there's a normal denoise, but you can also enable wind removal, de-reverb, and you can adjust that setting, hum removal, and you can adjust that setting, and hiss removal, and you can make adjustments to that setting. That's all cool, but probably my favorite part about this is that there's actually an equalizer. Click the drop down and you've got a bunch of presets or click on setting and you can manually adjust your EQ. I like to use the EQ to dial in my sound exactly how I want it. And it's certainly not a feature that's unique to Filmora. DaVinci Resolve has it, Descript has it, lots of video editors have it, but the EQ along with being able to fine tune some of these other aspects is something that I definitely miss when I'm editing in CapCut. So I'm happy to see it in Filmora. Another time saver I found was transitions with built-in sound effects. In this far left panel up at the top, when you click transitions, there's a whole bunch of transitions to pick from, but on this left menu where it's broken down by category, click SFX transitions. We'll just click on this first one to preview. 
And that transition has this visual of the no signal screen along with the beep sound effect. And there's a handful of these to choose from, like the fast wipe, or the page flip, or the film roll, and a glitch. So here on the timeline, I've got this spot where I'm showing the screen and then I come on and start talking. I just did a jump cut there, but if I wanted to apply this, maybe the fast wipe transition, I'll just drag it down over these two on it. I am using a Canva. So that added the video transition and that sound effect in one click, instead of me having to put on the video transition and then go to audio and find and add a separate sound effect. While we're on the timeline, something else that I like is that Filmora 14 has video tracks and audio tracks. Video is on the top, audio is on the bottom. And anything that's visual is just a video track. It drives me nuts in CapCut that text has to be on a separate track and stickers have to be on a separate track and you can end up with a whole lot more tracks than you need. Something else I really appreciate in Filmora 14 is the exporting process. There's multiple things here that I like better than CapCut. For one, Filmora doesn't get all bent out of shape when I want to save to an external hard drive. Meanwhile, in CapCut, if I say save to an external hard drive, I get this warning that completely blocks out the file name and I have to wait for it to go away before I can change or put in the file name. Also in Filmora, when I'm doing a landscape video, it doesn't take the liberty of also creating this extra 9x16 vertical TikTok type video, which for the most part I don't need and don't plan to use. And if I did want it, I'd create that aspect ratio and export it. Also, when Filmora 14 is finished exporting the video, it just finishes exporting the video. CapCut starts auto-playing the exported video once the export is done. That confused the heck out of me the first time I edited a video in CapCut. I finished doing the editing, I hit export, I left the room, and the next thing you know, I hear voices coming from that room and I'm like, what in the world? And then of course, because CapCut automatically creates this vertical video as well, when that one gets done processing, it starts to autoplay. So now it sounds like I'm arguing with myself, which I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but I don't need the computer doing it for me. Anyway, when I edit in CapCut now, if I'm gonna export and leave the room, I mute everything so that doesn't happen but I like that I don't have that extra step in Filmora 14. Now let me show you a few things that I'm not crazy about in Filmora 14. I'm gonna take out this transition that we just added and I'll show you why I dragged it down and put it exactly where I wanted it. In some video editors, CapCut included, if you have your playhead pretty close to where you want your transition to happen, ideally right between the two clips, and you click the plus button, it just knows where to add it. Filmora isn't quite as intuitive. If I click the plus button, I get this little message here that I need to select a clip. If I select this clip and pick a transition and click the plus just to add it, even though my playhead is right here between these two clips, it'll put the transition at the end of the clip that I have selected, not necessarily where my playhead was. So if I want this transition to happen right here, I need to make sure I'm selecting the clip to the left of the transition, not the one to the right. I'm sure I could get used to that, but for my brain, just remembering to drag it down and place it exactly where I want seems to be working a little bit better. Something else I'm not real kicky about is when I copy something, like here I have this circle on this particular icon. If I copy that, I'll just do Control C on my keyboard to copy and say for whatever reason, I wanted to put it here in this spot. You can use Control V on the keyboard or right click and paste. It pasted it in just fine in the right place, but it bumps the playhead to the end of whatever you pasted in instead of leaving the playhead where it was at the beginning of where you pasted the thing in. Also when dealing with the timeline is the issue of track height. I don't know about you, but I like a really big visible waveform to be able to edit by. Now what you see here is as big as I can get the waveform. To change the track height in Filmora 14, you've got a couple of options. You can right click on the track, go to adjust track height and make it big. And that applies that setting to every track in your project. So I'm gonna do that again, but this time I'm gonna change it to small so that they're all small and then I'll just adjust up the ones I want, like this video track. When I hover over the top edge of the track, I get the double arrows, I can click and drag that up, but then that's it, that's as big as we get. It's not bad, it's workable. And I can still identify the difference between a little bit of noise, some background noise or something versus absolute silence. I just wish the waveform could be a little bit bigger. Something else that's throwing me off is the scale of the horizontal scroll. I love the horizontal scroll wheel on my mouse. It's great for going through timelines, but in Filmora, it's just a little bit too aggressive. See my playhead right here. If I barely touch my horizontal scroll wheel, move it to the right, 
Now my playhead's gone, so it's kind of disorienting. I'm not sure where I am anymore because the location of the playhead was sort of my guide. And it doesn't matter whether I have the timeline zoomed way in or if I have the timeline zoomed way out. One nudge takes my playhead completely off the screen. Maybe that's nitpicky. Maybe it's my own idiosyncrasy. I don't know. Maybe I'll get used to it. I'm not here to say that Filmora 14 is better than CapCut or CapCut's better than Filmora 14. I just thought if you're looking for a video editor, you're considering Filmora 14 or maybe you're thinking about transitioning from CapCut to Filmora 14, some of these things might be helpful for you to know. There's a whole lot of other differences. CapCut has some things that Filmora doesn't. Filmora has some things that CapCut doesn't. These are just a few things that, while editing a video in Filmora 14 for the first time, popped out at me as differences, good and not so good. Thinking about doing some other videos on Filmora 14 as I discover some of these features and how it works. If that's something you're interested in, please let me know in the comments. Also, if there's any specific features or comparisons or anything particular you want to know about Filmora 14, let me know in the comments. I'll see what I can do. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching and please come back and see me in another video.